Hey you guys, welcome aboard Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how to identify hermit crab aggression and what to do about it if it's happening in your tank. Let's get started. All right, so there are really three different behaviors that you might see in your hermit crab tank and need to be able to identify whether or not that's true aggression or fighting so that you'll know what to do in the case that it is. The first behavior you might notice is actually what we call communication or pecking order, which is completely normal when you have a colony type animal like hermit crabs. And the, this is just antenna wars. Well, we call them antenna wars, but really they're communicating. They're kind of taking their antennas and filling them at each other. And they might even take one of their claws and kind of flick at the other hermit crab. And that is what we call pecking order. So they are just trying to establish um, a hierarchy within the colony who's the boss and that sort of thing. It's not aggressive. Usually their claws will not be open. Um, they won't be grabbing onto each other. And so there is really nothing wrong with this type of behavior. In fact, it's super normal. So in that case, just grab a camera, record it, have fun watching. The second behavior you might notice going on in your tank that might look a little bit alarming is actually called guarding. And this is mating behavior. So in your tank, the male hermit crab will actually hold on to the female crab. Usually the female is upside down, which is what seems alarming at first. And the male is not letting go of her. In fact, he's got a pretty good hold on her. Sometimes, in fact, um, when I think about it, most of the time you can hear some chirping going on during this um, guarding you know, uh, behavior. But what you need to pay close attention to if this is happening in your tank, is the top crab, the male crab's claw open? Is he rocking the shell? Um, is he actually grasping with his claw onto the other crab? If none of those things are happening, you guys, it's just typical guarding. The male is um, courting the female, per perhaps even actually mating with the female at that point. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. Gee, I really love you and we're gonna get married. Go into the chapel of love. Um, or just guarding her and protecting her because he's claiming her as his own. And they're usually very gentle um, and it's usually a process that takes a long time. This, we've seen our crabs do this for hours and I'm in hours. And so, um, but you can definitely tell that the female is not in any danger. Now she might be a little bit annoyed because he won't let go of her. And eventually she'll get away if she wants to. She'll pretty much tell him, okay, I've had enough. But the, the big key is to pay attention to the aggressive behavior. If there is not aggression going on, if the hermit crab's not trying to pull the other one out of their shell or rocking them, um, then, then it's just mating and guarding and it's really super sweet. So enjoy watching your hermit crabs. So the third behavior, which is the alarming behavior, it is the one that you want to be able to identify right away and then do something about it because um, when you have this type of fighting, aggressive behavior going on in your tank, ultimately if you don't intervene, there could be some major damage or a hermit crab really being um, hurt in the process. And so this is one of those situations where we will advise you to actually get in the tank and handle your hermit crabs to separate them and do some different things to keep that aggression um, from happening. Otherwise, we typically tell you guys that hermit crabs are a hands-off pet to let them do their crab thing and just watch from afar. But here is the, the reason for you to go ahead and intervene um, with your hermit crabs is if they are fighting. And the way that you can tell that they are fighting is definitely aggressive. There will be chirping. The hermit crabs will be telling you, I don't like this. Um, something's going on. They're giving you kind of a vocal or um, audible warning, I should say. 
and the claws are open, usually on both hermit crabs when it's fighting an aggression. Wide open, they might even have a hold of each other, pinching on their shell or on a leg or something like that. Another good indication that it's fighting and you need to intervene is if they are doing what we call shell rocking. And so one crab typically will be on the back of another crab, holding on with their claws to the top of the shell and actually rocking that crab pretty vigorously back and forth. And what they're trying to do is get that crab out of that shell, we call it shell jacking, um, or hurt that crab for some reason. And so that is the two, well, three uh, biggest reasons that you want to intervene. Um, chirping, claws open and grasping onto the other crab and shell rocking. If that happens, this is what you guys need to do. All right, so there's four different, I guess, tips on what you can do if you're having aggressive fighting behavior going on in your tank. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and intervene. Take, uh, gently take those two crabs and separate them. Um, actually separate them to opposite sides of the tank. That is step one. Go ahead and get them as far away from each other as you possibly can. And obviously if this is going on in your tank, you guys, you want to be present and watching because chances are they may find each other again and, and continue the, aggress the aggressive behavior. And so you need to be present to be able to intervene and try these next tips. Um, if you cannot be there, like maybe you see it first thing in the morning on your way to work or school or something like that, then first thing you would wanna do is separate them and put the aggressive one in an isolation tank within your main tank. And so we tell you guys a lot for um, a naked crab or a surface molten crab that you need to have kind of an emergency tote ready to go. Here's another reason to have that emergency tote just ready to go within uh, you know, an arm's length um, from your crabs. So grab that Tupperware container or critter keeper, whichever you decided to use, and make sure it has holes in the lid because you do need an air exchange within this Tupperware container. Um, go ahead, in this case, go ahead and put a little bit of substrate in there because they're not a naked crab um, and you're just trying to give them a timeout, basically, is what's going on here. So put some substrate in there. Go ahead and put two little dishes of water. You can use water uh, caps or you know soda bottle caps or if you have two small dishes and they fit in your container, that works fine too. So a fresh water, salt water, go ahead and put some food in there, even if it's just sprinkling it on the substrate if you're in a hurry, um, but they are gonna be in there for the remainder of the day since you're leaving, uh, and so you want them to have their needs met. And then stick that isolation tote in the main tank so that they have all the heat and humidity that they need um, for the day. All right, if you're able to be home, here are some other things that you can try. Separate them to the opposite side of the tank. If they come back together and you see them fighting again, um, separate them and put them to the opposite side of the tank again, but this time you're going to add new shells that you dip in the salt water. So a lot of times the shells that are in our tank, they can get sand in them or crab poop. I don't know why the crabs like to poop in empty shells, but they do. Anyways, go ahead and make sure that they're really good and clean. And for some reason, shells dipped in salt water is just more appealing to the crabs. And so that's why I'm telling you to do that in this case, because we've got some aggression and fighting going on. So go ahead and give them a fresh dip in your saltwater pool and set them really close to the crab that is being aggressive. Maybe he needs a new shell, all right? So give him lots of clean options all around him so he has nothing to do but think about, oh, here are some shells. I don't have to take my friends. Um, and so hopefully that will fix the problem. You guys, if that doesn't do it and you are watching them and he goes back to that crab and that aggressive behavior again, the next thing that you need to do is go ahead and isolate him, even if you're going to be home. Isolate the crab. Something is going on. He needs a timeout. He needs to be pulled away. It's already really stressing that other crab um, that he keeps going back to. And so even if you're gonna be there, grab that isolation tote like I just talked about and set that up. And I would suggest in that isolation tote, go ahead and put those extra shells and the food that you put in there, just make it kind of extra stinky and smelly. Maybe he needs some protein um, and make sure that you just really load up on those proteins to help out. Um, we're just trying to alleviate like any of the reasons that he might for, for you know, feel that he needs to be aggressive or, or whatever it is that he's searching for. Um, and so we're gonna try and give him all of that in his timeout isolation tote 
so you can think about what he needs and take care of that need. All right, and so usually if you do that overnight, that take care, takes care of the problem, um, and then you can release him back into your tank the following day. Again, of course, you want to keep an eye on things to make sure that he doesn't go back to being aggressive. Um, and then I would also, at that time, add separate feeding dishes in your tank. Um, a lot of times we like to just have one dish because, I mean, it's just easier to keep up, it takes up less space and that sort of thing. But sometimes, you know, crabs, especially if you have a few in the same size, so the pecking order is kind of a constant battle for them, um, sometimes it really helps if you can just have more than one dish and I would separate them in the tank and put your aggressive crabs on the opposite sides next to those bowls so that they don't maybe feel threatened that they don't have enough food or that some you know one of the other crabs is going to eat it all before they fulfill their needs and that sort of thing um, so that's the reason for separate dishes and again high protein um, if they are attacking other crabs that's that could be one of the reasons um, that they are doing that all right, now that there is no longer an emergency going on in your tank, it is time to sit back and reflect on why this fighting or aggression is taking place. So hermit crabs live in colonies and they, they don't just fight for no reason. They're not an aggressive animal in that way. When they fight, it's because they're lacking some type of resource. So as their keepers, um, as they are in an enclosed environment and unable to search for the resources that they need, we have to make sure that we're providing that for them. So take this opportunity, you guys, to think of these four different reasons that your hermit crabs may have begun uh, fighting in the first place or become aggressive within your tank. So the first thing I want you to think about is shells. This is vitally important to hermit crabs' survival. They will fight each other for shells. They will grab a crab and take them out of their shell in order to have it if that's the only shell available to them. So it is very, very important that you are providing three to five shells in the correct sizes and types. So we have a video, Shells 101, that will teach you what type of shells your type of uh, species of hermit crab generally likes and where to buy them, how to measure them to make sure that you have the right shell. And we will go ahead and link that you guys in the iCard right here. So make sure that you watch that if, if you haven't already. But yeah, three to five shells for each crab. And you wanna make sure that you're also um, providing growth shells so that as they go down to molt and grow that they have those resources available to them. If you have crabs that are very similar in sizes, you have to have enough shells for both of them in that size so that they don't fight over shells. All right, so that's the first thing that I want you to think about. The second reason that you may have aggression in your tank could be linked to nutrition. So again, we have a video all about food and nutrition, you guys, so check that out. But protein is so important for your hermit crabs, which is why I was telling you in the middle of this emergency, add some protein, especially some stinky protein like fish um, or you know shrimp, something like that. Make sure shellfish is cooked first, of course. Um, tuna or you know scrambled eggs, something that's really smelly that that definitely um, sends that scent to them. Like oh come here, like I have that that protein that you're craving. So um, protein is so important. It's fifty percent of their diet on a daily basis. So make sure that you are definitely including a lot of really good proteins, pellets not gonna work. If you're feeding pellets, guys, just throw those away. It's not going to fulfill the needs for your hermit crab. In fact, they're toxic um, and they keep your hermit crab from growing and molting. So get rid of those pellet foods. All right, the next reason that you might be experiencing some aggression in your tank could be linked to the size of the tank itself. So we say, generally speaking, you want 10 gallons per crab. Um, and that's really for safety and molting, but it's also it's just safety and space and your crabs being able to feel like they have what they need to be able to explore and have um, the resources, the food, um, the foraging items and that sort of thing available to them. If they are super, super cramped and they feel like they don't have the space to feel safe in their environment, they can become aggressive. So make sure that your tank is the correct size, that you are not overcrowding your tank, that you don't have too many crabs in a small space, you guys because aggression will happen in that case. And finally, you guys, perhaps your crabs are just bored. You know, as caretakers, it's our job to make sure that we create an environment as close to what they would experience in the wild. 
In fact, your crabs are from the wild. They were just taken from the wild not long ago before you got them. So they're looking to have an environment that they're comfortable with and familiar with. Um, it's also going to make them feel safe and be more active, so it's definitely beneficial for you as their caretaker, but it's absolutely important and a, and a resource that your crabs need within their environment. So great enrichment can include forging items like bark and leaves and climbing logs and um, different kinds of lichens. So make sure that you're having those forging items. Something really simple to add to your tank would be worm castings and green sand, which is not only a forging item for them, which incre increases their enrichment, but it's also very nutritious and they absolutely love it. So check out um, in our description below, you guys, we have links on where you can get all of that stuff. Think about too some exercise. That is great enrichment for your hermit crab. We have hamster wheels in all of our tanks and our hermit crabs are walking on those all the time. Super fun to watch, but it also fulfills the need for them to have that exercise because they're scavengers in the wild and they walk miles and miles at night for their food. So they need that. They need that resource um, in their tank. So those are some ideas, you guys, for reasons as to why this aggression may have started in your tank and some tips on how you can identify whether it is true aggression or normal hermit crab behaviors. I hope this video was really helpful for you guys. And like always, if you're having an emergency and these things aren't working for you, please reach out, comment down below. We, we are always responding. Um, DM us on Instagram. You can always go to the Lycos Facebook page, you guys. There are mods there willing and available to help you guys at all times. So please reach out in the case of an emergency when these tips aren't helping you and somebody will be here to help you guys out. That's what our community is all about. That's what, why we started this channel. Um, and so don't be afraid to ask us questions. Um, if you haven't already, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel and click the bell so that you will be notified when we drop new content. Also, follow us on social media, you guys. We give little tips all the time. We have lives and pictures and videos of our crabs in their tank and things like that going on all the time. So follow us over there so you don't miss out on anything. And until the next video, you guys, take care. We'll see ya. Bye.